League of Legends was released in 2009 with 40 champions. Since then, they've added 118 more playable characters to the game. However, each addition doesn't always go as planned. Sometimes Riot overlooks certain aspects of a champion, making them be too strong, too weak, or sometimes the new champion completely breaks the game. Today we take a look at some of the worst champion releases. But before we get into that, this video is sponsored by Poro Fesser. Poro Fesser keeps everything you need all in one place. Like information about your teammates, opponents, automatically importing the best runes and more. In this tab, you get a simple quick view at recent patch notes, specifically showing you changes to the champions you actually play, including changes to your runes and items. Also, their in-game overlay is genuinely useful, giving you live updates of how you're performing compared to others in your rank or higher, along with jungle timers on the map, and they even show you how long until your inhibitor respawns. Which, honestly, I'm surprised this isn't included in the game as is. If any of this sounds good to you and you want to start improving your league experience, download Professor for free with the first link in the description. Now with that being said, let's jump into the video. Getting started, in this video we'll discuss some of the more forgotten champion releases, but I can't make a video like this without mentioning Viego. Released on January 21st, 2021, Viego's concept was destined to have some problems. The whole gimmick with Viego is that he can turn into every champion in the game, and this interaction leads to a staggering amount of bugs and general technical issues. At one point, there was this bug involving Viego and Anivia. This bug would cause all players to disconnect and then the match history of the game would completely disappear. It's extremely simple, you all decide like here, Viego uses his E like this and the game is gone, gone forever. This bug was discovered by accident, but I'm sure you can see how someone could intentionally abuse this if they're in a game that's not going well. Of course, this bug was eventually fixed. However, for a while, this was the story of Viego's life. New bug gets discovered, disable Viego, fix the bug, re-enable the champion, then rinse and repeat. Today, most of the abusable bugs have been dealt with. But initially, Viego's game-breaking bugs were so unpredictable that just to be safe, Riot banned Viego from being played in professional matches. So despite being added into the game in January, the champion wouldn't be widely enabled until June of that year. In April, Riot announced that Viego would not be enabled at any point during that year's MSI, one of the biggest yearly League of Legends tournaments. But after that, it was concluded that most of the real game-breaking bugs had been treated, and he was finally enabled. But if you want a real scope of how bad Viego really was, you may be familiar with the channel Vandero. This channel is quick to document the most recent bugs that are in the game. And since Viego's release, he has uploaded over 30 videos featuring Viego. Also, in case you're curious, I checked to see how Viego is doing in professional matches, and funny enough, in 2021, Viego was played in 453 different games and came down to an almost exact 50% win rate. Next up, for number 4, Tom Kench. Tom Kench was one of the most unique champion releases at the time. But when the champion was being revealed, people started noticing that Tom would actually be perfect for trolling. This champion had an ability that could eat an ally and take them somewhere else. The intended use would be to protect your teammates, but of course it wasn't long after his release that people started using Tom in nefarious ways. A somewhat viral story in 2017 was a player who obtained a 0% win rate with Tom Kench after playing over 200 ranked games. Essentially, this Tom Kench is duoing with a friend and they are both committed to losing every game they play. So right off the bat, if you had the misfortune of being in this game, it's a 3v5. However, Tom can pick one other player and disable them from participating in the game. In most scenarios, he'd pick his ally jungler. As you can see, he ensures that the jungler gets no camps and simply has a miserable experience. Ultimately creating a game that would be almost impossible to win. I think the most shocking part is that he went over 200 games of doing this without getting banned. 
Regardless, you can see the potential of how Tom Kench in the hands of a troll would be the perfect tool to ruin a game for their teammates. And if you look around online, you can find plenty of examples from people who had negative experience due to Tom Kench. All I wanted was one game after work before bed. And what do I get? A Tom Kench who did nothing but eat me, run back to base, followed me around, and straight up said all he does is f with people in bot games to make them rage. Like what the actual f Now since his release, Tom Kench has received multiple changes and he is now unable to be used by trolls in the ways I just mentioned. Moving forward, number 3, Yasuo. And Syndra, Bard, Lucian, Azir, Yorick, Skarner, and a few others. What all of these champions share in common is that they released in either a very weak or very buggy state. Or both. They started off with bad win rates until later being tweaked to better fit their roles. Now some champions are different. Like Bard. He was weak on release, but he was also a unique feller and most players just didn't really get what he was doing. Like sure, he's collecting the meeps on the ground, but why? But again, with the right buffs and more players understanding him, he's become one of the best supports in the game. And every other champion I mentioned has also found better footing in the game since their rocky release. Except for Skarner. Number 2, Aurelian Soul. This one is kind of different than the others. Here's a champion that was essentially described to be one of the strongest beings in the game's universe, as well as literally supposed to be the largest champion in the game. Everything about his reveal and rollout was exciting. He was cool looking, he had an ability that could fly across the map, he could create this massive star and stun everyone on the screen. Of course I want to play him. And most people did. However, although on his release day he was technically in one of his strongest states, he was a clunky champion to control and had a big learning curve. Those who couldn't figure him out played poorly and those who took time to learn him would show you that he was actually overpowered. And throughout the 2016 season, Riot slowly nerfed Aurelian Soul more and more until he wasn't nearly as powerful as he once was. It didn't take long for Aurelian Soul to go from one of the most anticipated champion releases to one of the least played characters in the game. As of making this video, he is literally the second least played champion in the game. Number one is Skarner. Finally, number one, Seraphine. I'll be honest with you, I actually quite like Seraphine. But despite my opinions, Seraphine would go down as the most poorly received champion release. However, she didn't have one major problem that rubbed everyone the wrong way. There was just a lot of smaller negative situations that added up to one big negative situation. When it came to her gameplay, she was fine, but some people didn't like that her gameplay was actually similar to Sona, the only other music-based champion in the game. And staying on the music note, some players didn't like that she felt like one big marketing tool for KDA. And this one's tricky because I thought it was cool the way Seraphine came out, but I can see how people got a bad vibe from someone at Riot pretending to be a starving artist on Twitter. Although it was figured out that Seraphine would be the next new champion as her name was found within the game files, her social media accounts still gave people some confusion. Because I get it, that's a cartoon character on her Instagram. But that's a real cat. What's going on here? Additionally, on her Twitter, Seraphine would talk about her struggles with mental health and participate in Mental Health Awareness Day. And you can see how that rubbed some people the wrong way because, well, she's not real. In the end, I think the Seraphine social media release was actually quite interesting. If anything, I think where they went wrong was that they tried to make her unironically feel like a real person. And it went on for too long. She tweeted for the first time on June 26, 2020 and would end up releasing as a champion on October 29th of that year. I believe that during that 4 month period, some people got sick of the concept and along with being disappointed by her actual in-game champion, 
many people just flat out didn't like Seraphine. By the time her champion spotlight came out, it quickly became the most disliked video on the League of Legends channel. Now these are just some of the more major issues, if you want a deeper analysis, you're in luck. Because there's actually a couple hundred videos going quite deep into this topic. Set is advertised as a pit fighter. His skin makes him into a giant mech. Seraphine is advertised as a pop singer, but her skin makes her into a pop singer. But with that being said, let me know if I missed anything in the comments and subscribe if you haven't already. That's it for today. I'll see you again very soon. Take care.